<laughs> it's going to be a roast there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Tozman. Yes. Fred speaks today with your body speaks. It's the number five assignment in the manual in which the speaker is to use stance, body movement, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact that illustrate and enhance through her verbal message. And then it goes on a lot of little things about gestures and body language and so forth. It'll take up my entire three minutes if I read it all to you. But simply, the focus was on body language and speech. Now, Fred, the topic that you chose for this really didn't lend itself to this assignment. And so you probably made it tougher than it needed to be as far as fulfilling the requirements of, of the speech. This was an educational, it's more of an educational speech. You were teaching us. You were, you were more pensive. And it was very hard for you to get out there and be wild with the body. And so you, you weren't. And it would have been appropriate in the speech if you had been. But I thought the manner in which you gave the speech, though, was very authoritative and, and respected. Your posture was excellent, good use of hands. Good use of the body to move from here to over here, depending on what you were talking about, to describe the stage, kind of give us a picture of what the Biltmore looks like, although many of us have been there many times. There's <laughs> folks that have not. So well done there. Eye contact was right on. You were looking at us. Nothing really, no problem there. The facial expressions, I put very genuine and real. So all the way along, I thought that you know, as far as using your manner, mannerisms and your gestures, your body, your, your eye contact, you did very well with all of those things. Next time, though, I suggest you use a speech that really gives you a chance to, to bring out body language because the speech really didn't. You talked about the roast last Saturday, and I was there, and Jennifer is a very roastable person. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hilarious roast. I've been to many of these things, and it was one of the, the better ones, I thought. One thing I really liked is that you told us right up front what you were going to tell us. You listed three things, and then you told us the three things. But when you got to the end, you ran out of time, and so you wrapped it up and sat down without really summarizing the, the three things. But the, the focus of setting out what you were going to do, I thought that you did a good job of that. The first item of setting of the setting, you spent way too much time talking about the Biltmore and the microphones and so forth, and that's why you ran out of time at the end. And then when you talked about your actual presentation, you explained some of the things that went wrong, and I remember when you paused momentarily and I was clutching for you, but you pulled right, right out of it very quickly. And I thought that you actually projected well. I was halfway across the room from where you were, and I thought that you did do that well. The, you were kind of mellow from at the beginning of the speech when I respected more body language. One thing you mentioned, you talked about the international governor when you met the international president. I think we really need to make sure we're calling the number one guy by his right title. <coughs> as far as getting the hook, this is a precise event. And if you let somebody go over time, then you let everybody go over time. And believe me, I've been there. I've done this roast. It's tempting to stay up there as long as you can until somebody pulls you off the stage. Everybody got the hook. It wasn't just Fred. Everybody got the hook. So at this level of participation, you need, if you're out of time, you're out of time, and they need to pull you out of there. So having said that, oops, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. <laughs> 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 <laughs>